All right, so by now, you know that the Pantanal is home to an amazing array of wildlife. By far the most sought after is the powerful jaguar. You've seen a lot of them. You've seen it featured in my, in my Instagram and my feed quite often. But in addition to that, you get a whole host of other species as well. And I think the Pantanal itself is home to almost 160 different mammal species. Hard to believe, but true. And again, as I said, the most sought after is the jaguar. What we look for, though, in addition to the jaguar, is also pretty exciting. Um, probably one of the ones you see more often, and even in the camps and the, and the uh, lodges where you'll end up staying, is the uh, capybara, which is the largest rodent species in the world. Now, they are pretty big. Um, they, they're quite short and stubby, big head, big uh, teeth, very rodent-like teeth, um, and they are very, very common throughout the entire Pantanal and all of the camps and the places where we stay at. Um, other kind of things you can see are some deer, different deer species. Uh, you can see anteaters. You can see an incredible array of bird life, the most colorful birds you've, you can ever even think of. Um, but then there's one special little critter that I'd like, love to chat about and introduce you to. I'm sure you've seen pictures of them. You sh I'm sure you've seen footage of them, but um, I felt that they were worthy of just a, a piece of video that, that I can share with you. And um, that is the giant river otter. Now, um, by giant, it means they are pretty bloody big. These things are almost two meters in length, guys. That is a very, very big otter species. Uh, if Once you see them up close and you just get to see the head and the bulk and the size of the head, that alone tells the story of how big these things are. And the fact that they occur in small groups, say anything from three or four to eight or ten individuals, uh, family units, makes it even more imposing and daunting. The reason for that is, is that they actually do stand their ground. These are not just a random little otter species. Their size and bulk make them quite formidable. I think it's the longest otter species and only outweighed ever so slightly by um, the uh, uh, otter species found in the ocean. We saw on a number of occasions these otters interact with jaguars. Now, let me tell you, that those interactions were rather fierce. Um, the jaguars actually try to avoid the otter on most occasions and seldom do they actually hunt them. If there is an occasion where they can perhaps get some of the, the, the young ones um, isolated or maybe an adult isolated, yes, they would have a go. Um, but they are quite dangerous and they can and will have a go at a jaguar big or small. And in fact, my guide Ricardo once saw where a female jaguar took her baby across um, the river. And when they got to the middle of the river, the young cub about, I think maybe four or five months of age, swimming behind the mom, all of a sudden an otter family picked up on them and swam towards them and harassed them to the point where Ricardo thought the young cub wasn't going to make it. They were bitten, they were harassed, loud vocalizations. Um, and it was quite an unnerving sighting for Ricardo and his guests. Speaking of vocalizations, they also have about nine different distinctive vocalizations. Everything from an alarm call, aggression, and even a reassurance call. So quite an, an, a, a very interesting species of otter, an animal to see in the Pantanal. We encountered them on several of occasions. Most of the time would be swimming along the banks and on the hunt. That's when they're very active and when they move so they hunt mainly um, catfish species, often whichever fish is most dominant during that time of year in the river. Uh, we saw them most of the time with, with a species of catfish. Um, and also they'll, they'll very often pursue uh, cichlids. Um, they'll even have a go at, at eel. We saw one catch a very big eel, um, about as thick as that, the eel species itself. Um, they will have a go at young caiman and even young anaconda. So quite a large variety of prey, but well into the 90% of their prey selection would be, would be fish. And to see them hunt is a very cool experience. So um, they, the, the, the families in the, in the Pantanal itself, the regions where we safari within, those otter families are quite habituated to the boats, which is brilliant because you get to see them up close. It gives you the opportunity to really follow them uh, within a few meters at some times or at some point during the, you know, the, the viewing experience. And what they'll do is they'll hunt, the hunting takes place underwater, they'll pop up with a fish and that's when you get to see what they caught, how big it is, the species. They typically don't feed right there. They'll take it where the fish swim up to the, the bank and look for a portion of the bank, either vegetation or log where they can embed themselves into, stop floating in the current, and then they'll feed right there using the vegetation as an anchor. 
and they don't share well. This is one thing we saw and, and Ricardo assured us, us of is the fact that they don't like sharing their food. So even though it's a social animal and they live in the social environment, they do not like to share their food with others within the family. Um, and even the one with the, with the eel, it was a big eel. It consumed the bulk of that eel on its own. And what a meal. Um, they estimate about 10 pounds a day per, per otter, which is a large amount of fish and eel and caiman or whatever it has chosen to uh, consume during the day. Now the Pantanal is special in the sense that you can see these otters there. They estimate over a thousand otters occur in the Pantanal region. Now that might not sound like a lot, but if you consider that they estimate less than 5,000 otters remaining today, it's a pretty significant chunk of the population that can be seen in and around the Pantanal. Um, they were very heavily persecuted in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, specifically for their pelt. They've got the shortest fur of any otter species and the pelt is thick and warm. And because of this, they were completely overpoached to the point where they were listed as vulnerable. Um, and only, if, I think, in the late 90s, early 2000s, was that class down to endangered. But still, an endangered animal, less than 5,000 in the wild, and you get to see them pretty much guaranteed on our Pantanal safaris. And to spend time with them, to see them hunting, interacting, is fantastic. Absolutely incredible experience. I remember on our, one of the last days in October last year, we spent time with a few of these uh, otters and they would typically come out on the bank. They often come up and bask and this bank is typically close to a site where they would keep their, their uh, young ones. And in, on this occasion, we believe in the nest, which is a dugout on the side of the riverbank, dry dugout, where they had some young ones. Um, we believe that they were in there, the young ones. So they kept going in and out. But when they came back out, they would often go on a bank where they would um, um, scent mark the bank, they would urinate and defecate, and also do this funny jiggling move, which is also a way of um, distributing the scent, um, both on their feet and on the ground. But it is humorous to see the way that they move, almost like a shuffle or a dance. Um, and these then would proceed to jump back into the water, very territorial, viciously territorial towards other otters in the area. If any one of them came close, certainly there would be an engagement or a fight of one kind or another. Um, but the comical side was just seeing them and to act like this, getting up on the bank. You get a sense of the size and the shape of them, but also to see how uh, funny they are out of water. No doubt at home in the water, that's where they spend the bulk of their day. Um, look a little bit clumsy when they get out on the sides and also more exposed and vulnerable to jaguars. So not their favorite pastime, super alert, super aware, um, but definitely more water-based uh, than being comfortable on the land. So there you have it. I hope you learned a little bit more about the giant river otter. Um, not the most in-depth description of them or uh, explanation, but it is an animal that I really enjoyed seeing. It was my first time to see them in September and October last year, and I loved getting to know them. Certainly a highlight of the safari experience. Take nothing away from the rest of the animals, the jaguars, capybaras, and etc. But uh, the giant river otter was for guests the, probably the one that stole their heart the most. Thanks for watching, guys. More coming up this week on the Pantanal and all the animals that inhabit it.